Good morning, everybody. It's Bob Fibbs, The Retail Doc, and it's 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. I'm glad you're here today. Do me a favor and let me know where you're joining in from. We are across the world. The last time, I think we were on five continents and just about every language you can imagine. So between uh, Facebook and live, uh, live streaming on LinkedIn, as well as my YouTube channel, welcome all of you. And uh, there is always a little lag there between the uh, time that I ask something and uh, it shows up in in uh, comments. So do that. Uh, I'm just going to get right into it today. You know, uh, this week I held a poll and I asked people uh, compared to last March of 2020, do you have more or less inventory in your store? And uh, it's the poll came back at 61% more inventory than last year and 39% less. And I thought today it would be great for me to walk through what an open to buy is. Those of you on LinkedIn and your C-level execs, you know all this, so you can just wait till I get to some other questions. But for those of you who don't, uh, I thought it would be really helpful. So I'm going to basically give you an example of why we do uh, open to buy. So the reason it's important is because we're at the end of a quarter and knowing how much inventory you have on hand tells you whether you should be buying anything else and how soon you can do it. So this will go quick. It's also in my book, The Retail Doc's Guide to Growing Your Business, which you can get by going to my site, retaildoc.com. But I'll give you the example. I thought I could do this in a really fancy way, but it turns out I can't. So I'm going to do it in an old school way. So let's just say that you have um, done your... Uh, your inventory and you have found that you have $500,000 in inventory and then you look and you have a $15,500,000 in sales last year. So first thing you're going to do is take your average sales and divide them by the number of months in a year. And in this case, that's 125000 is an average month for you. And then you're going to go through and plug that in and you're going to see, well, I have 500,000 in inventory. If I divide that by my average number of months, I have four. Now, why is four a magic number? Because that means you have four months worth of inventory on your floor. And why does that matter? Well, because that is your, I'll go back to me. Uh, that's because that's your money sitting there. And that's going to give you about a turn of about two. And that's not bad. But notice you have enough inventory for four months. So when you go to a store and you're just like, oh, we'll write the orders. Uh, what are you gonna do with that four months worth of inventory? Because you're always thinking, I want a turn of at least two in my inventory. And uh, ideally three would be even better. So those of you who said that you have 61% more inventory, I hope that's all new fresh inventory. But my guess is it's probably not. And the thing that is always important as we come into a really strong time is that we can go back to our lazy ways, right? When things are selling and you're feeling great about yourself, we don't have to really worry about, well, what's not doing and what should I be looking at paying attention to? And managing your inventory is crucial. Most of the major retailers came into 2021 with 50% less merch than they had the year before because that allowed them to buy closeouts, allowed them to buy a lot of opportunities that other retailers couldn't pay for. So make sure that you are looking at that uh, as well. That was my little moment there. Um, hopefully I'll get a little more high tech version of that at some point. Kelly, glad you're here from West Winchester, Virginia, not far from where my mom grew up in Bridgewater. Roger is actually here on uh, live instead of saying you're on replay. I appreciate that. Alex is up early from, uh, from Washington, and I've got a lot more of you jumping in as well. So do me a favor and let me know where you're joining in from, even if it's after the broadcast, because I'm always looking at that. And uh, I am going to ask all of you to be thinking about, I want to reinvent this, um, this time slot in my life. Uh, quite simply, if you haven't noticed, uh, Facebook, unless you're going to pay for something, it's not going to be shown. Like the idea of organic search is just kind of going away. So what do you like? What do you want more of? Uh, I'm looking at a paid model, but quite simply, this time is only valuable if people are showing up uh, and new people are joining it in, and finding new value in it. And that's what I care about is finding new value for you and uh, not being, you know, we've been doing this for almost five years and it was great what we did last year. I was really thrilled to be there when we had tens of thousands of people on these, but as it, as it gets on into the new, uh, 
uh, normal, whatever that is, I think it's easy for us to feel like I'm a commodity and I don't want to be a commodity. I want to be something you're waiting for and looking for, and it's got to develop, give you value. So you can certainly feel free to let me know what that is, either through an email or any number of those kind of things. So there you go. Some quick questions. Nancy, what are your thoughts on daily huddles for retail staff? What are the most successful techniques so they don't feel intimidated? How do I train management to be consistent with huddles to facilitate increased sales? Nancy, you're like going for the gold on how many questions can I ask about a huddle? So let's be clear on what a huddle is. A huddle does not replace training, by the way. A huddle is, you know, what's our game plan? And a lot of stores uh, have realized it. I've been preaching it probably for 20 or 30 years. But basically, when you start a shift of whether it's going to be two of you or it's going to be 10 of you or it's going to be 100 of you, just getting ready together and focusing on one thing, um, not like, uh, you know, is it Miracle on 34th Street? We have, we've overbought in this. We need to sell that. That's not really it. It's trying to find a, a way to tell a customer success story that happened the other day, a note you heard, something you saw online, a comment that was on a social post that makes them feel like, oh, I like working for this brand. We're positive in those. Might also be uh, in my way with SalesRx, my online retail sales training program, it's going to be to reinforce something that they learned. So if we talked about how to answer the phone properly, uh, then they're going to go through and you're going to do one little role play. And so the role play starts out, um, hey, so we've all learned about the proper way to do a greeting. I'm going to role play with somebody right now on how to do that. So just remember, these are the three points you want to hit. So Jane, ring, ring, you're up. Now, the problem is that so many of us don't do this, or we do it haphazardly, or we do it when something goes wrong, that people are, are uncomfortable, like, oh, what is this? So we might call it improv with a, a customer, or you might just call it uh, playing, you know, play customer. But we get all of this junk onto it, usually because we're not prepared. You know, even when I'm here with you, I have my notes of what I have to do, do and talk about. I don't feel comfortable winging it for one reason, that I have to value your time and you have to value your employee's time. So the other thing you can do is to set a timer for five minutes that makes it like you better get it done in five minutes because that's it. So that's the most successful. And so they don't feel intimidated. I don't know what the question is there. If your employees feel intimidated, it's usually because you're coming to it with this idea of, I'm going to, you know, you're, you're mistaking it for training, which is a huddle is not a training time. A huddle is a time that you're reinforcing and rewarding and making it feel good. So I hope that helps. And if you want more about that, you certainly should sign up for SalesRx because SalesRx has a whole, two whole role play guides and a whole way how you do huddles that makes it virtually impossible for you to do it wrong. So there you go. Uh, Toy Store has asked, I'm scouting social media people to help me with my social media. That's that's okay. I but uh, all right. I was quoted by one place two fifty per post. Uh, what should I expect to be reasonable to pay for three to five posts a week? So if you're saying that's uh, four posts a week is a grand, which is four grand a month, um, boy, they better be bringing in people that say I'm worth a million dollars and I will give you a thousand dollars. That's pretty high. I won't kid you, I've looked at people to do my social media and you know the biggest problem is they come up with bland and boring or generic and they don't really know my brand. So I always stop before people say they've got someone who does social media. It's very hard to do social media right uh, and I can tell you that just from somebody who teaches it and is always a student of it. Uh, so I always say you know, what is reasonable is what are you willing to pay? If you're only willing to pay 500 bucks a month, you can go to a company like Upwork and bid that out and have people bid on it. That would be my suggestion. Uh, if you're more, if it's more of a broader scheme, like you know, someone's going to handle your website and they're going to handle the integration of your online site, then that's worth a lot more. But make no mistake, social media, a lot of it is vanity. A lot of us for us is, oh, look how many likes I got and how many people were there. But if you really dig into the dirty little secrets of most social posts, and you know this yourself, a lot of us click like without even reading something or watching it. So, and if you really dig deep into your live videos and you see that what counts as a view is only three seconds, and then you look at people that stayed past three seconds, it drops dramatically. And so um, that's why the reasons I'm asking you, you know, what would be of value to you to making sure that we do this. So there you go. Uh, Brandy says, what would you, what would you prepare for in the coming months? Um, I think I would prepare for summer. I would prepare for Easter this week. Uh, what states are with with states opening up? Do you think people will return 
to in-person shopping. Of course, they're going to return to in-person shopping. I can't even believe that question, Brandy. The reality is people are already doing that. We're already seeing it in Australia. We're already seeing it in straight states have been open. Malls are actually packed. We're actually seeing people going into stores. We're seeing a lot of interest and excitement about it. But again, as I said about inventory, a lot of retailers have gone and ply, played the COVID card still. Oh, we're understaffed because we can't find anyone. There are more people still unemployed than uh, ever. So you need to look at it's your laziness or your you're hiring or you're training and you're not attracting people who like to be trained and like to be uh, working. So you're gonna have to do a better job at, at fixing that. So that's for all of you. And we are expecting, yeah, a lot of people are calling it the rolling, rowing 20s and then people are like, well, remember what happened with the depression? Yeah, thank you for that. Thanks for pouring water. Get the hell out of my life. Uh, I think it is the roaring 20s for a myriad of reasons and a myriad of things that are gonna be happening. And, uh, but make no mistake, as you're doing better, the tailwinds that are helping you are helping your competitors. And so I think it's really easy to pat ourselves on the back and how smart we are and, you know, keep our hours limited and, and, or the other side, which is to stay, everyone's got, you know, you've got to put sanitizer on if you walk into my store, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you're so focused on, you know, the, like it was March of 2020, that you are actually keeping people out when that may not be the best way. So uh, I think that we should be preparing for an amazing 4th of July. I've said this since last November and I think it's gonna come true, as well as a uh, back to school that rivals uh, any you've had before and a great holiday season. And more importantly, if you look at that study I shared earlier this week, uh, people are more inclined to shop in a brick and mortar store than before COVID and they're willing to spend more when they do it. So uh, that doesn't mean the good merchandise will sell itself. I had to laugh, was it last week? I had somebody said, oh, well, you know, 90% of my merchandise sells itself. That's total BS. No merchandise sells itself. Uh, if they are, why are they coming into your store for it? Because someone's carrying it. All right, Tony, our shopping street used to be busy, but still fairly dead. What can I do to attract customers again? Tony, um, I don't know, are you here today? Uh, Tony, are you here? I don't know, are you? I don't see you, uh, but uh, our shopping street used to be busy, but still fairly dead. So attracting customers, if you're in a downtown area, the number one thing is get more of your merchants together to get your windows cleaned out. And I'm talking about the dead flies, the little pieces of tape you left on it, the half lit uh, light, you know, half the light bulbs are burned out, the cheesy mannequin with the creepy uh, mouth from the 60s, you know, and those kind of things, or the forms that are from something from a Woolworths that you bought, on a closeout sale back in the 60s. Uh, it's time to look like a modern retailer and understand what a great retailer looks like. And then I'm a big believer of buy a welcome mat, red welcome mat, and roll it out in your sidewalk every day and keep it clean. And then put some beautiful planters on either side, the highlights that makes people see it and install some great lighting and have some great uh, merchandising, which by the way, in Sales RX, there's a whole merchandising course, which we go through and tell you exactly what makes a great window and how all that works. But um, just getting people there isn't the answer, Tony. I mean, I think you can certainly do a better job. I think that's the thing I'm seeing with a lot of downtowns. You still have a lot of uh, uh, building owners who are not taking the opportunity to reinvest and do something. And even if you've got an empty building, you can get over to art, you can find out ways to make the street look prosperous. prosperous profitable, either one works. Uh, but if you can't do that, then it starts with you and just realize I've got to make it look like my store is a destination instead of it's blonde, blonde and uh, beige where it just all fits into everything. I hope that helps. Tom, uh, top fan Sherry says, how important you feel community involvement is the lifeblood of retail establishment? Well, I think it's a uh, coin toss, Sherry. What do you consider community involvement? To me, Community involvement could be anything from uh, some people think, oh, I give out gift certificates to the local high school. I don't think that's particularly great uh, community involvement. Other people are out doing beach cleanups uh, with their community. I think that's great as long as it's branded and people see that you're doing it. You're actually part of the community. I think the uh, story out of Detroit when the you know, the city went bankrupt and the, the parks weren't being done. And one retailer ended up saying, let's get all our lawnmowers down to the parks and let's mow it that was pretty amazing and then toro comes in and helps sponsor it and all of that that's pretty amazing that's community involvement but there's also community involvement where one downtown association 
in the in uh, in Michigan went through and they realized that a lot of foster kids didn't end up uh, at 18. They're kind of on their own. And so they formed a community action, uh, what, uh, I don't know, committee to go through and raise funds to help these people and then made it part of their mission that they were going to try to hire these young people and to get them jobs and on a path on the future. So when you say community involvement, I think there's a lot of ways it can do it. And it has to be non-religious. It has to be non-political. I'm talking about just being community involvement. But um, there's a there's a I think the best retailers do it because that's who we are, and they don't do it as saying, "Look at us, and we'll we'll sell more." Um, I know Deanna is here, and there's several other users who who uh, will post on your personal page, "Oh, this is what we did." Uh, to help our community, but they don't put it on their business pages. So I hope that helps. That's why, again, uh, there's a lot to think about when you ask that question. Uh, Homespun says, we need to raise our prices due to increases from suppliers. What's your recommendation in pricing? Uh, you increase it. You know, the reality is uh, there will always be somebody cheaper. And uh, so I just say, your recommendation is look what's going on in Amazon and look what's going on in your competitors and then take that as something to know, but you have to make the money back. If, if, if the, if the product goes up by 50% and you say, well, I can only raise it 10%. Well, then why are you carrying it? Because your goal is to be profitable. And this brings me to one of the other things that a lot of independents never do is that when you get a new order in, you have to up, you have to raise the price of the ones that you had earlier. And some of you are like, I crow a foul. That's, I hate people that do that. Well, that's just the way smart businesses do because it will cost you that to fill that product again. And it doesn't mean you're going to be doing price updates every day, but you're certainly going to be looking at that and updating them at least quarterly so that you end up not en ending up telling me we're going out of business because we didn't make enough money. Ultimately, there's no one that's more successful than your mindset. And if you think you can't, as soon as you hear yourself say that, just know you've just raised your hand. Yep, I can't be successful. In fact, I'm doing a challenge in a couple of weeks. I'm taking next week off, by the way. I'm not going to be here next week. And I may not be here the next as I prepare for this uh, challenge. It's going to be on Facebook it's be for five days. At the same time, we're also going to be doing a sales RX sprint. So there'll be two things that will be going on in a week. And one of the first things on day one is talking about mindset. And I'll give you some tools and get you to think about uh, how many times are you limited yourself to success from the junk you're doing in your mind. So we're exercise, exercise that hopefully, and that'll just be on day one. And then I'll tell you all about that when we get closer, but the signups are, are gonna be five days in advance. You're not gonna be able to sign up in it, uh, any anytime right now. You can let me know your interest though. And in the newsletter tonight, if you read all the way down, there's a little button that says you can enter your information there. I'm gonna take a quick look at the, any of your questions here and answer them before I get off. And then there we go. Uh, Joseph, we need employees. We can't get applicants. How do we attract them? We had four crappy apps in five weeks. Well, that means you need to get eight crappy apps in five weeks. Talk to half a dozen local businesses and all in the same boat. Well, Joseph, I certainly wouldn't be talking to any local businesses and then patting yourself on back how it sucks to be you. Uh, the point is you need to get out there. That means you're going to go to job fairs. You're going to hold a job fair. You're going to go to local high schools. You're going to talk to the local colleges. It's work. I know I've opened many new stores in new areas. I knew no one. But the reality comes down to there are people that need jobs and it's more than just posting it. It's going to be making a Facebook live video and say, we're adding shifts. We're looking for people that do X, Y, and Z. You're the perfect fit if you do X, Y, and Z. If you know someone who does X, Y, and Z, have them contact me. Here's my cell number directly. You're going to put a form on your on your website that's going to say the exact same thing. You're going to go through and take ads out against people like that and against your competitors. There's a million things you can do, but talking to other retailers about how it sucks to be you never helps. And that's across the board on all of it. I'm just done with the bitching and moaning, aren't you? I'm done of hearing how it sucks to be you and Matt, people that won't wear a mask or, oh, we had this curbside. Just stop with that. Let's get a new normal. Let's get a new normal that says... Oh, and here's what we're doing to do things better. You know, we just, we just, I've just had four major accounts come to SalesRx from people that have been watching my videos for years and have got my newsletters for years. And at any moment, I could have called up my buddies and talked about how, yeah, no one is responding to this. No one's doing this. And yet I know in my heart, keep going. Find a new way, but keep going to make sure you're out there in a new way. And I say that's the same thing for you.
Justin, I did a Facebook live video of an unusual project. We performed a sound system in a horse-drawn carriage. I love that. Why the hell didn't you share that with me, Justin? Jeez. You garnered phone calls and questions about it from my former customers. You've said before that sometimes you need unique and the unusual really helps business keep fresh in people's minds. Social media works. Of course it does. And notice what it was. It was you talking about how cool, look what I'm doing with this. How fun is that? I do some of that, but you know, when I'm relegated to, to COVID, I'm actually not able to go out into stores and do some things, but we've done some of that. We've done some virtual makeovers. You've, some of you've been part of that. I love that. So yeah, Justin, I would just say, look at other ways you could take people that behind the scenes uh, is really, really powerful. So congratulations. And now you got to think of what's the follow-up, right? So now you're going to be inviting people, show me what you've done with uh, in, uh, putting a sound system in something that was tricky and how you solved it. Invite them to talk to you. That's always the best way to do it. Uh, <laughs> Jackie, oh, I need that. I don't know if that's sales or X or you need the sound system in a horse-drawn carriage. Either one works for me. Uh, yes, exactly. People can hear a smile on the phone. That's very true. All right. We got new comments coming in here. So I'll look at that. Rachel, love it. Great ideas. Um, Holly, our, start is, our town is starting a major road construction project in downtown the last 14 weeks. It's probably going to last 20 weeks. Prepare yourself. Outside of sales events in the store, any other creative ideas to drive traffic? Holly, I thought I'd already answered this, but if it was me, I would go through and I'd make a video every day and say, here's what they're doing down there. Here's how to get to our store. And when you get here, here's something new. You're having fun with it. You're not getting into the, oh, it's destroyed business. Oh, this is mayor, damn it. Aren't we just tired of finding a thing to be outraged about each day? I'm, I've lost list of how many things I'm supposed to be outraged uh, with because every social post I'm supposed to do that. And I'm calling from the mundane of what I'm supposed to be eating and not or exercising or doing my business or not doing my business or doing social media and not doing it. And then let alone all the other things and personal things. So uh, there you go. Shivram, is that a typo on the site? Is it showing live on January 7th or the old still on? Just signed up. I think you're going to a different one. So uh, January 7th, that is a different one. You're at, you're at an older one, Shivram. So I will, uh, Shivram, I will post uh, the little link that you can uh, be on the notification, but the actual sign up isn't going to happen till then. Uh <laughs> Jackie, sales are X definitely maybe a horse and carriage after. See, there you go. Holly, try not to do sales to bring people in. Keep active on social media. Try working with other businesses. That's very true, Donna. I forgot I had my little thing to show you all of these things. Uh, good, good, good. Great rant. I try not to rant as much. I mean, I don't try to rant, but when it comes out, it just has to. Be. There you go. And live events is going to happen more and more. Uh, I'm just looking through. Um, any other questions here? Oh, I love that. So Julie, I'm going to put this up here and then I'm probably going to leave. So Julie says huddles before the store open were also a great way to get customer employees out of the back room and then they're on the floor, aprons on and ready to roll. I love that. Great. Well, again, you've spent uh, 20 minutes or so. Yeah, 24 minutes with me. I will. Uh, I don't know how do I get that one out now that I've, now that I've added you. All right. Well, maybe that'll be the way I I end with your with your with your quote on my screen. Yeah. Can I do it that way? Of course not. That would have made it easier. Well, in any event, you've spent the time with me. There's no broadcast next week. I'm going to be trying to figure out what works for you. Type what do you like seeing me? You've stayed to the end, so you're my true fan. So, you know, what do you like? What would you like different? What would you like more or less? Would you be willing to pay for it? Because I may end up just making this a subscription, and that gives me more abilities as well. Because we have a SalesRx Facebook page for those users, and we talk a lot more about what they're going through as well. So in any event, let me know that. But uh, remember, you're about as uh, successful as you make your mind up to be. If you tell me that you can't, you win. What's the point of saying that? So I asked the question and said, how can I? And with that, let's make retail important again. We can change the world by the people working and shopping in retail. If we just open our hearts to other people first, they'll get, they'll, when we help make their day, they'll help make our day even better. Thanks so much for joining me.